want to look at some of the specifics of President Trump's statement, perhaps to try and discern where the U.S. policy here is going forward. He specifically mentioned the European signatories to the Iran nuclear agreement for them to completely abandon them. So far, he's been unsuccessful on that. He also spoke about expanding NATO's role in dealing with Iran. What do you make of those statements? Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, the EU3 put out a statement in recent days uh, uh, regarding the situation in Iraq and with Iran that I thought was very positive. The reason I thought it was positive is it because it recognized uh, the truth regarding the Iranian regime. This is a regime that reflex reflexively and habitually uses proxy terrorism uh, a as a major tool of national power. And that's why I think any uh, declarations of an end, uh, end of Iranian aggression are both unwise and premature. I, I think we're probably unlikely to see barrages of ballistic missiles launched from Iran, hopefully in the coming days and weeks, uh, because they're trying to avoid that, a conventional conflict with the United States that they know they would lose. Um, but certainly they're going to go back to the, the support for terrorism, proxy war via asymmetrical terrorism that Tehran has pursued since 1979. And I think we would be foolish to uh, expect otherwise. I think our NATO partners, the EU3, understand that. My call, uh, my respectful uh, plea to the America's allies uh, in Europe would be, you know, let's put disagreements behind us regarding the Trump administration's uh, uh, decision to leave the JCPOA and ask ourselves, what's the big goal? The big goal here is to prevent the world's worst state sponsor of terrorism from acquiring nuclear weapons. And we're going to be able to do that more effectively if we unite at this moment and try to get Iran back to the, the negotiating table, this time in good faith, to negotiate a deal that has a robust inspections regime, doesn't have ridiculous sunset clauses, and doesn't lower the bar on its ballistic missile program. Well, then let me pick up on that uh, with you, Mayor. Uh, and we heard also Bradley talking about that maximum pressure campaign and that it should be redoubled. Is there any reason to think that more sanctions uh, are going to make any difference on the Iranian regime? Uh, on that front or, or otherwise? There is a possibility, which I know, I don't know if it will happen, is that if the Iranian regime will face collapse, then they might go to negotiation. I mean, we saw a mass protest in Iran uh, several weeks ago. The economic situation in Iran is bad, but the regime so far prevailed and survived. And, uh, and they probably believe that they can survive until the American elections. We also have to remember that Khamenei now said negotiations with the United States are totally pointless. And I think that Khamenei has absolutely no trust in the U.S. He will refuse to negotiate with the U.S. And again, unless he feels that the regime faces imminent collapse, there will be no negotiations between, with the U.S. until November 2020. Right. Bradley, there's been a lot of confusion the last few days on the future of American troops in Iraq. I mean, where do you see this heading in the next few months? I think a preeminent goal of the Iranians is to evict uh, the United States military both from Iraq and from the region. Uh, I think that is clear. And I think that uh, Soleimani, before he was uh, thankfully killed, uh, a leading goal of his was to displace attention from the malign Iranian regime onto the U.S., and he pursued a strategy to bring that about. You know, I think uh, the protests that we've seen recently in Iran are some of the most significant since 1979. There's been a growing divide between the Iranian people and, and the regime. The Iranian people realize they deserve much better. They deserve a government that looks after their interests rather than pursuing ex uh, and exporting terrorism. And so um, I don't think we want to do anything that unifies the Iranian people with this, this regime, this radical regime. And that's why I'm thankful that we've had a kinetic de-escalation, uh, because I think that allowed the previous dynamics to resume, and that is the Iranian people realizing and advocating for their interests from a regime that fails to recognize them, and we don't want to do anything to push them together. All right. Bradley Bowman in Washington and Professor Meir Liebmack, thank you for being with us. I, I